All right, it's saying it's live now. You're live. All right, so we're just going to go. <clears throat> All right, Barack De Hawa. Barack De Hawa. Barack De Hawa Shai. Barack De Hawa Shai. Um, pretty much, you know, we're just going live. Uh, it's a lesson uh, that we got going on. It's called Business is Business. Um, and really, it's not personal. It's just business. You know, so um, we're just going to go into it and go in the spirit and... Um, you know, just whatever the spirit gives us to bring out, that's what we're going to deal with. Um, pretty much, you know, we were talking earlier um, just about different things, and different situations that's going on. And uh, pretty much, you know, that's what it is. It's just business is business. Uh, why is it? Yeah, let me see. Yeah. Got to refresh it. Yeah. Just want to make sure that, you know, it's going. Everything good. If you brothers can hear us, you know, Baba Fasha, just uh, let us know. All right, I see there's some comments already on here. All right, cool. All right, yeah, I mean, there's some comments already on there. So, yeah, so pretty much, you know, it's called business is business because, you know, being in the, in, in the flesh that we are, that we're in, uh, waiting to um, for the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to um, deliver us from this uh, from this unco incorruptible or salake from this corruptible body. Uh, matter of fact, give me that real quick to start off with uh, Psalm seventeen fifteen, and then get um, Philippians three and twenty one. Okay. So while we're waiting to be delivered from these corruptible bodies, you know, we're in the flesh. And we're susceptible to things of the flesh. And, you know, when when we teach and when we uh, see brothers coming into the truth, you know, we get emotionally attached to brothers sometimes. You know, because it's just human nature. You know, because we're still in the flesh. But the problem is, is that the Lord is showing us through the different situations that's going on, through the scriptures, and then when you turn the pages... Yeah, you know um, that that um, we can't allow our emotions to govern, you know, our decisions or our judgments in this truth, and that's what happens a lot of times. You know that that you know sometimes we let our emotions get the best of us instead of relying on what the scriptures are saying. You know, and it happens to to all of us because you know we're in the flesh. Because, you know, as long as we're in this flesh, we're going to, you know, we're going to go off, you know. Right. But the thing about it is when you have men coming into this truth and men that are that are actually, you know, laboring with us, we tend to to uh, um, have, you know, uh, like an attachment, an emotional attachment, attachment to them. Mm -hmm. Just like I give an example, King David and uh, um, uh, Jonathan, you know, it said that the love that they have for each other compass the love of women you know now you have these faggots out here that'll take that and say well see they were faggots they were homosexuals no man the love that a brother has for another brother is different from the love that a man has for a woman you know it's different it's no doesn't mean that they have homosexual tendencies or they, they pop in each other and they just caught feelings for each other you know what it is is that you know you have a certain amount of love for a brother outside of the love that you will have for a woman and you know, being in this knowledge, we know that women are wicked, you know, inherently. They're wicked. And, and that women are the weaker vessel. And you know that if you have a brother that's really a brother to you, then the, the, the bond that you have with that man is, is closer to you than anything else. That's right. Because you know that that man will be there and he'll give his life up for you. That's what it means. Not because they just have homosexual tendencies. You know, and this world teaches that. That's where you have the gay Bible. You know, and David had... Jonathan, Jonathan was his lover. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit, man. You know? They would have said that Elijah was a pedophile because he laid on that boy that died. You know? He, he had his face and all that on top of him. You know? He said, oh, he was a homosexual, a pedophile. You know? The fuck out of here, man. You know? But the thing about it, like I said, you know, we have emotions and, and that's what we have to be changed because we have a connection to brothers that are in this truth. That's right. But the thing about it, we can't let that deter us from the the, uh, the task at hand. And the task at hand is that we have to teach the truth. We have to be governed by the truth. 
we have to be governed by the precepts. We have to turn the pages. Yeah, yeah. You know? So you, can you read that? And yeah. that's why we have to be changed. These bodies have to be changed. And we're going through right now, we're going through the process of learning the left-hand side of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So that when we get to the kingdom and our bodies are changed, when we make decisions and judgments, it's going to be pure righteousness and, and in pure perfection. Because when the kingdom is established, we already went through the wicked side, you know, and now we're learning back the tree of, of, of good, which is the tree of righteousness. So when we get, when we sit on the thrones, Yahweh uh, Shai you know, we make it to, 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 to that point. And we, if we sit on the thrones, we're going to be, when we, when we judge, we're going to be judges in righteousness. Because right. we're going to know both sides. We have already been able to weigh out both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, because we have the experience of it. Now, the word experience goes back to the word ex, E-X, which is out, and peritus, which means to try. So, to try out. So, the experience means to try out because you've gone, you've gone through things that have exercised your mind and your flesh and things of, you know, of, of that nature to be able to know how to deal with this situation because you've been in that situation before many times. Right, so that's what we have to have these bodies changed. So read that, brother. Psalms uh, seventeen and uh, fifteen. Yeah, Psalm seventeen and fifteen. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Right, I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Because why? We have to change these bodies. Get up, uh, Philippians yep. three and twenty one. We have to change these bodies because these bodies are corruptible, and that's the reason why. We don't always make the proper and the right decisions on certain things because we're still in the flesh. And the flesh is constantly warring against the spirit because our flesh wants to act on emotions, but our spirit wants to act on what's right, which is the scriptures, you know, which is what's it written in this book. That's why we pray to the Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, to deliver us from here so we can do the, the, the right thing so his law, statutes, and commandments can be put into our inward parts so we don't go off anymore. And that's the bottom line. Yeah. You know? That's why this is called business is business. You know? Because when you sometimes you make decisions, you know, you might have to cut a guy off in your camp. You know, because if he's not if he's not contributing to the body, if he's not being beneficial to the body, he don't need to be there. No matter how cool the guy might be. You know? And these are things that we this this, this these are hard lessons, man. And you're not going to get this from any other camp. Them other camps don't deal with situations like that. Every, all of them camps deal with, it's just that how they're this and they're that. And you can go out and you can party, you can have a family, you can get married, you can do this, you can do that. As long as you wear your garment and your fringes, everything's going to be cool. Nah, man. Yeah, no order. There's no, exactly. Mm -hmm. You got it, bro. You want yeah, it's uh, Philippians 3 and 21. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned... Like like unto his glorious body. Read that again. Huh. So Philippians three and twenty one. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned? Like, I'm sorry. Start at twenty. Okay. Huh. Uh, Philippians three and twenty. For our conversation is in heaven. Right now, the word conversation there. When you go back to the Greek, it uh, I forget the Greek word at polyutma or something like that. It goes back to our citizenship, because really it says conversation because of what we're speaking. But it's really our citizenship. Because we are citizens of heaven. You know, our citizenship is really from heaven. We're just angels in physical form that have come down to the earth to, to, to play out what the Most High wants, wants us to play out. You know, because this is His plan. He's the architect. You know, and we're just the workers that have to get this thing going. So we're on the earth right now. But our, really, our, our citizenship is really in heaven. Because that's where we come from. That's why when we die and our bodies die, our spirit goes where? Back up to the heavens. Because that's where we come from. That's our home. You know, the fourth dimension. Go ahead. Come. Who shall change our vile body? Slap it. Yeah, uh, four, 20 again. Four, yeah, 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Right, now hold that. Before you read anymore, go to Acts, the first chapter, uh, where it says... Um, Men of Galilee, why, why stand you gazing up? Okay. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll see if I can find the exact verse. Okay. It might be like around the ninth verse, from the ninth verse. As a matter of fact, you can start, okay. start at the ninth uh, verse. 
Yeah, this is uh, Acts uh, 1 and 9. And, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their, out of their sight. Right, because he came, he, Shai was crucified, right? After he was crucified, uh, Joseph of, 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 of Arimathea begged Pilate for his body. They took the body down, excuse me, gave it to him. He was the one that put him in his sepulcher. Yahushai, after that, at the, at the end of the third day, which was the beginning of the fourth day, he rose up. He went and showed himself to the women. He went and showed himself to the apostles. I mean, well, they later became apostles, disciples. And he taught them for a period of 40 days. And he broke down the scriptures and he broke down certain things that, that gave them understanding of the scriptures. You know, then after that, after he taught them and built them up to where they needed to be so that they can go out and teach the, the, the gospel and the doctrine that he, that he taught them, then the angels came down and there was a, a ship that came down that actually took Yahweh Shai's body back up into the heavens. So when this whole thing was happening, the disciples are there looking, gazing up, looking at Yahweh Shai going up into the chariots and there were actually two angels on either side of them. And you notice... Those two, those, they might have been the same two angels that were in his sepulcher when there was one of one of his uh, at the feet of his of his tomb and one at the head of his tomb, because Yahweh Shai right now represents the Ark of the Covenant. You know, we had an Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant had a mercy seat where Yahweh, the, the Most High Himself, would come down and and uh, 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 communicate with the High Priest concerning the uh, atonement. And, and the blood sacrifices for the nation of Israel for the forgiveness of sins. So Yahweh Shai became that ultimate sacrifice. So he became the Ark of the Covenant. So those two angels could have very well been the same two angels that were in the sepulcher that were actually there when Mary uh, came there and when uh, 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 Peter and John got to the sepulcher. You know? So read that again, brother. Uh, and if you uh, got precepts, yeah. anything you want to add, Babak Shai. Uh, this is uh, Acts 1 and 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Mm. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as they went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Right, two men stood by them in white apparel. Those were the angels, go ahead. Gone. While, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Mm -hmm. Right, so the same way they saw Yahweh Shai going up into heaven is the same way he's going to come back. Mm -hmm. But now when he went up into the heavens, he went up into the heavens, and when he got there, he had that glorious body. You know? And that's what we're looking for. That's what we read in uh, Psalm 17 chapter, that I will be glad when I awaken with thy likeness. Because that's what we're striving for. We strive to get rid of these these filthy wicked bodies so that we can actually be be whole again. We can actually be in, in unison with the Most High and Yahweh Shai back in, in in the proper order as it's supposed to be. You know, not according to this world, but according to the way that the Lord wanted it from the beginning. You know, but we had to go through that process. Matter of fact, I'm sorry, bro. No, you good. I know we're all over the place. Go to uh, Ecclesiasticus and Apocrypha 17. And uh, I'll give you the verse once you get there. Okay. Um, just bear with us one second. That's the 17th verse. Let me, let me make sure. Okay. If you have anything. Yeah, you know, yeah we'll I got something there. real quick. Uh, this is Romans 8 and... Uh, I started uh, uh, 17. Now now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For, for I know that in me that is that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Right. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Yeah. So, so yeah. You, know, um, you know, we may like a brother according to the flesh, or, you know... You know, you may, you may, you know, deal with things according to the flesh, but it's the spirit. Everything is about the spirit. That's why we named this lesson business is business. 
Because at the end of the day, we have to tend to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, we have to tend to what the Lord um, has, has, has given us, you know, and, and provided in, in his order. You see what I'm saying? So it's not about our wicked flesh. You know, our flesh may like a brother. You know, we, we might, we might, you know, uh, you know, chill with a brother or, or, you know, like him according to the flesh because he's a cool dude. But guess what? It's not about that. It's about the spirit and the order. At the end of the day, you know, if, if a brother going off, he going off outside of, you know, if, if, if he's, uh, if he's a, you know, a leader of a camp or, or, you know, and that's just there for the order. But at the end of the day, you're going off, you're going off, you know? That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you said, uh, GMS quick and powerful. Yeah, it's a Taza one. Proverbs 22 and 10. He said, cast out the scorner and contention shall go out. Yea, mm -hmm. strife and reproach shall cease. And that's true. So, you you know, it's not about being cool because if a guy is cool, but he's disrupting the body, if he's holding back the doctrine, if he's uh, using brothers and, and, and doing evil to brothers, you know, and just doing despite and just serving his own belly... You got to go, man. You can't just be here just because somebody likes you. You know? The Lord might not like you. And if you how about Shem Yahweh Shai don't like you, you got to go, man. Because that that's like the the, the, the Lord, how about Shem Yahweh Shai, they're like the immune system. Yep. The immune system, if there's something in the body that don't belong there, guess what? The immune system is going to find every way they can to fight that shit off to get rid of that shit. You know? And the Most High and Yahweh Shai are, are not a weak immune system. They're not going to give, their immune, the immune, that immune system is not going to give up. That immune system is strong and it's fighting. And it's spiritually getting rid of all that, that, that disease, all them cancers, all that, 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 that those uh, different things that are, that are not good for the body. They're getting rid of it. You know? The most high in Yahweh Shai don't get emotional. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, uh, one, of the brother, uh, one of the brothers posted a, a preset. GMS sought, and he said unto them, How is that ye sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? That's right. Didn't Yahweh Shai say that to his, uh, to his, his, father, to his and father and mother? Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, hey, everything is about the father's business. It ain't about, you know, and that's, hey, going back to that word business, and let's, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, let's go into that word. You got to get that, yep. That's a matter of fact, if you, if once you get that, if you, if you can get it, uh, actually get it on, uh, on, uh, on there. Can I go here and get it? Yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead. No, no, get. I'm saying uh, the word uh, in the in the blue letter. God, I got you. Oh, in the blue letter. Okay. Yeah. And then you can, you know, you can get it on your phone. The the other word. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Um, Luke uh, two. I think that was Luke second chapter. Two and forty nine. I think two. Uh, let's see. Yep. Yep. So just hit that. And then get you know get the get get the business in that in the book. Kinda, right? yeah, yeah. In the, in the, oh, slack. That's how I got you. Bro. Got it. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, this is uh business and Adam online. All right. Uh. All right. All right so it's it's a count compound word. So you got busy. All right. Which which means attend to, to be concerned with, be diligent. Mm. All right. And, and you see that word diligent. That word diligent always pops up. It always seems to pop up, you know, because what is what is this year? The triple D, death, destruction, and diligence. All right? All right, so uh, busy means to attend to. All right, and then, and when, and then when you go into that word nest, it means, uh, let's lock it, hold on. It's all right. Hey, this, this is, you know, it takes time. Uh -huh. If you guys get bored and, you, you know, you don't want to hear it, then move on. Is nest means uh action, basically uh or it means in. It means in. That's what it means. So um business means to be in diligence or in um uh, in diligence, in attendance to, mm -hmm. or in concern with. Right. All right. So business is business. Right. Uh, we have to be, we have to attend to, we have to be diligent, in a, we have to be in, in attendance, we have to be in diligence, okay? Right. At the end of the day, you got to be involved. Yep. Bottom line, you got to be involved, you know, and that's what business is, being involved, you know, in the diligence, you know, in the work, you know, so that's what business is, to be occupied. You have, then you have what I said, till I come be occupied, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? So he, he said to be occupied. And occupied in what? In bullshit? 
and your woman and your your your, your parents and all that. No, to be occupied in the truth. You know. Um. I looked up the word my business, my father's business. It only had the word pater, which means father in the Greek. So I just looked up. I just typed in the word business, and I looked in the uh, New Testament under um, the word uh, Acts six and three. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. All right. So now I looked up that word for business, because uh, like I said, the other one. Just said pater, father, mm. which pretty much means that whatever his father wanted him to do, he did. So I just want to look up this word business. It's uh, let's just hit, let, let's let, let's say Esau say it. Oh, slap it on Strong's G okay. fifty five thirty two. Chaya, chaya, chaya means necessity, need, duty, business. Mm. You know, employment. An example, an affair, also by implication, occasion, demand. Requirement or destitution, Ooh. business lack necessary needful uh, use want. So if you need, if, if somebody is gonna be, if you're gonna have somebody running your business, you need somebody there that's gonna be useful to the business. You know, if they're not useful to the business, then they're useless. And if they're useless, what's gonna happen? They're gonna be moved out. Matter of fact, brother. Uh, I know we got a few scripts we'll be holding on deck. God, that's cool. Go to, uh, uh, what is that, Matthew, uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, Matthew, I think it's the 7th chapter or the 6th chapter. Let me just uh, type it up in here. Um, Matthew 5 and 29, but you, we, you might want to start up a little bit above that. Okay. Um, start at Matthew 5 and 27. Okay. And let me, uh, I want to... Well, I want to see what you know. Uh, what's what's the um? What's the uh? Oh, uh, go to the live stream. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay, here we go. Occupation, yeah. O occupation, diligent care. Hey, man. So this this our occupation, man. Yeah. You know, the Lord the Lord commanded us to do this and and to care for it. You know. Yeah. Go, go. This is uh, Matthew five and what was it? Slap it. Matthew five, five and I think I think it started at twenty seven. Twenty seven. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is Matthew five and twenty seven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Oh man, it's like it is all kind of good. good oh yeah. Oh man, see the brother just put it on. Yeah, there. he just put it on there. Damn, yeah. that's a spirit. So that's a spirit. So go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, Matthew five and twenty seven. And ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Thou shalt not commit adultery, mm. but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Right. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Now, what does that mean? Because you know you've had you've actually had people that actually have plucked out their right eye. Some people have actually gone before uh, uh, Congress or some some uh, uh, state building and actually sat there and cut off their right pinky or cut off their right finger, you know? So they take it literally. Yeah, but that's not what it's talking about. So you people out there that, that claim to know the Bible, when things are literal, you say that they're spiritual. When things are spiritual, you say that they're literal, you know? And you don't have a clue because the scriptures say that this Bible is made a snare unto you. Mm. Same thing with some of you guys that claim to be in the truth. And that's where the Lord is moving on you, man, right now. You know, because business is business. If you're not about the Lord's business, then you're not about what, what the truth is all about, man. You know? So read that again. Yeah, this is uh, Matthew 5 and 27. Well, I started at uh, 29. No, yeah, oh, 29. Yeah. yeah. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Now, what does that mean? That means if you're cool with a guy, and that guy happens to... You know how they say, this is my right-hand man or whatever. This, mm -hmm. You know, this is my ace boom coon in the hole or whatever. You know? If if he ain't doing what what he's supposed to be doing, you gotta go, man. You know, no matter how emotionally attached you might be to the guy, you know. And this is this this is about the father's business. The father's business. The Most High is hard, man. The Apostle Bar always says that the Most High is a hard teacher. You know, if the Most High is a hard teacher, there's things that's gonna happen that's gonna fuck with your emotions. You're gonna be like, damn, man, why I gotta be like that? Don't worry about that. 
The Lord said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Matter of fact, let's get that. Isaiah 55 and 7. Yeah. But read, read on oh, yeah. where you, where, yeah, where you, you at. That. Somebody yeah. grab that and hold on, hold that on that. Yeah, and, and cast it. And we so, got, I know your brother got precepts on the comment board. We're trying to get to that too. Yeah. Y'all got a lot of bad precepts out there, man. Uh, Matthew 5 and 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out mm -hmm. and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that their whole body should be cast into hell. So what is the body? The body is the church. It's all the members, all the brothers that's in this this thing teaching. Like uh, the brother Atazawan put on the comic book, he said, cast out the scorn and contention shall cease. So that's a member of the body being casted out because it's not good for the body. You know? So that member is casted out, now the rest of the body will be able to function. You know? So it said, if you cast out the right eye, it's better that one of your members be cast out than the whole body be cast into hell. Because if not, if you if you don't get rid of a guy, your whole camp can be infested and infected by that, you know. And if you don't get rid of them in and in, in a whole in all the different camps, then this whole thing could, could come crashing down, you know. That's what the apostle Tar just made a decree that if you got them knuckle draggers, you know, and then, you know, I mean, it's, 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 the terminology also is jive turkey. If you got these guys hanging around, get rid of them. You guys that are, that are supposed to be camp leaders out there, that's, that, that's heads over your camps, and you see something going on, you gotta you gotta squash you gotta squash that pinche bug, man. Yes. You gotta get rid of that 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 uh, uh, dead weight. You know the Lord is not looking for warm seats or uh, for warm bodies to fill in seats. The Lord is looking for the the uh, uh, elect and the teachers to go out there and teach. The Nadia Hawishai said. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye to the Lord of the harvest that he sends forth laborers into his vineyard. This is the vineyard. <clears throat> it's time to pluck. It's time to get busy. It's time to do things. You ain't got time to be sitting around and scratching your head wondering, like, I wonder if I should do this. I wonder if I should. No. Get involved, man. Get into it. Like uh, my man James Brown said. Uh -huh. Get involved. Get into it, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got to get into it, man. You gotta you, you don't wait to be told what to do, get involved and get into it. Now, if you're not certain about a certain thing, of course you're gonna ask for counsel, you know, but do the work, man. You see you see a spot that needs to be filled, fill it. Don't wait for somebody to say, hey brother, plug that over there. You see that hole over there? Plug that. You see a, a, a situation going on, bring it up to you know to one of the brothers in your camp. You know, because this is this is this is serious business, you know? What you got? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll just finish up. You got that Isaiah, right? 55, yeah. yeah, I'll just finish up. Uh, and if in the 30, and if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Yeah. All right. You got. You want. You want to say something on that? Hey. Well, you know. Um. That just like the apostle was saying. You know, if if one member of the body is lacking. All right, you got to put all feelings aside because, I mean, fuck feelings, man. All right, we we have something to attain to. I got you. No, you good. Yeah, but, uh, you know, we, we have something to attend to, you know. We're, we're attending to the spirit. And, um, you know, Yahweh Shai ordained us, all right, to, to do this work. Okay, we're employees under Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, so if you see one guy lacking... Or, or you know slacking on the work all right hey he got he got to be put out because we're building a we're building a spiritual house all right yeah. so if you see one guy in the house all right he's sloppy with the work all right he's uh you know he's drinking a beer on the job or you know whatever he's hey, bullshit he's bullshit mm -hmm. you yeah. know it's right. just it's tell it like it is you got you got mm -hmm. more on that no, that okay. would. Yeah. Alright, go to Isaiah 55. I know your brother's got some good precepts up. Matter of fact, let me read this right while you're getting that. Uh, this is our GMS Vegas sit down, Brother Karatazar, Galatians 5 and 9. A little leaven, leaven up the whole lump. So if a little leaven, leaven up the whole lump, leaven represents wickedness. So if a little leaven, leaven up the whole lump, that means you got to get rid of that little leaven, whatever it may be, get rid of it. You know, either the brother get his shit together or he got to go, man. We ain't, we're at the end, man. We don't have time to be sitting down and, and reconstructing, you know, guys' lives and their whole mentality. If a guy come in and he have a problem with, with, the, with the doctrine or he wants to change the doctrine, 
you gotta go, man. Yo, you could if you wanna do that, you could do that, but go do that shit somewhere else and call yourself something else. Because as for me and my family, in my house, we're gonna serve you how about Shemel Shah as we have been serving them. It ain't no more time for no jive turkeys, man. Them knuckle dragon suckers, man. You know, no more time for that shit. It's time to do the work or, or move on. Move, go somewhere else, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Why are you wasting your time here? Get ghosts, man. You got it, right? Her. This is Isaiah 55, as Isaiah 7. It says, Let the wicked forsake his weight and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Mm -hmm. And let him return unto the Most High. Right, so if you come into this knowledge, the Lord brought you here. You ain't going to change the Most High's thoughts and his ways because you came into this thing and you thought that you was more, you were smart, you were slicker than him that created slickness. Huh. You know? You, it ain't going to work like that, man. You ain't, you ain't slicker than the Most High. Huh. The Most High created your ass. The Most High brought you into this. Who the fuck you think you are, man? Just do what the Lord told you to do, man. And that's what happened. That's why the Most High, man. Hey, I'm, I'm going to say it like this, man. The worst thing that the Most High created was a nigga, man. Yeah. And I, I'm talking about niggas, sticks, or, and all the rest of them, the tribes, man. That's the worst thing that the Lord created outside of Esau and the nigga woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? You got to include that. <laughs> you know? Karen. But you got to rock. <laughs> Karen says, let the wicked... Forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. Right, because when you come into this thing, you're supposed to let go of that old man. You ain't supposed to bring that old nigga in here, man. Yeah. It don't work. That old way you was doesn't work in the truth, man. Yeah. But you have guys that come into this thing and they learn the scriptures, right? And, but they still that old dude that he was and they trying to bring in that old shit into, into the knowledge. It don't work like that, man. If y'all hey, got anything, y'all know. Hey, yeah, come hey, on, come but, but said, nigga's the worst thing since an albino roach. God yeah. damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the truth, man. Because, yeah. hey, brother, I've seen albino. I've, I've lived in, in a house that had roaches, man. Come I'm talking about wall-to-wall -wall roaches. Like, you know, you have the wall-to-wall -wall, uh, carpet or you have wall-to-wall -wall, uh, um, uh, uh, wood flooring. Mm -hmm. I've lived in a place that had wall-to-wall -wall roaches, man. And I woke up certain nights going to the kitchen. And I seen a, a this the floor just looked like nothing but a roach floor. Damn. And I seen a white roach. And I'm I'm looking at us. I'm I'm like I'm like uh -huh. I don't know where to start. I'm going for the white roach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stomping that motherfucker out. Yeah, God. I'm serious, Same. brother. Yeah. It's finished. Finished, man. Finished. Yup. Yeah. Yeah. God, it says, and let him return unto the Most High, and you will have mercy upon him. Yeah. And let him return unto the Most High, and we have mercy upon him. All you got to do is turn back to your about Shemel Al Shai. If you find yourself in a predicament or a situation when the Lord is against you, turn to the Lord, humble yourself, and pay adventure. The Lord will have mercy on you, man. Yeah. You know, but you got these guys, man, they just think that they're smarter than the most high, man. I don't understand you guys' fucking mentality, man. Okay. How can you be smarter than the most high? How can you be slicker than the one that created slickness, man? I, I, don't, I don't get it. Yeah, because they're looking at men, you know. And oh that's man, a, that's the thing. They they keep looking at men, and then they're not looking at the spirit. You know, you know, like we read in in, in, in Sirach, You know, the, these men, man, they they do things for the eyes of men. Cla Cla really? you got Cla it, bro. Cla this is yeah. um, Ecclesiastes twenty three nineteen. The brother um GMS Soul uh, Melody put that up. He said, "Such a man only feared the eyes of men, and know it not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun." Yeah, because and, and when you read down more, you know, it, it, it goes into that even more. But it, it is, you, you can't hide behind closed doors, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like the Lord created everything. There's nowhere to hide. So when you're doing, when you're doing things in the dark, you're really hiding from men. Because then you, you really have, you don't have to fear the Lord in you. Because then you don't believe the Lord can see you. So now you're on another level of bugging out. See, when you start bugging out and you start bucking up against the truth, there's levels to that, man. I like and the that. more your pride blocks you, level of <laughs> there's like levels to bug it out. Yeah. You know, because you could, you, like the scripture said, you know, uh, and I read it again, it says, it says, the righteous man is taught and let him return unto the most high and he will have mercy upon him. And the apostle just said, hey, man, if you, if you catch yourself and you correct yourself, then, you know, you can make adjustments. You can go repent unto the Lord. You know, you can, you can pray, ask the Lord for forgiveness and the Lord could have mercy on you. But when you keep bucking up, 
man, you, you get more and more demons on you. More and more thoughts are coming to your mind as to why things aren't going the way you're going. Mm -hmm. So now you're questioning the Lord. Waxing worse. You're waxing worse. Start texting brothers and all kind of shit, you know? Yeah. This, I got Go ahead. You got something? Yeah, I got something. This Let me is, just finish this up. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's and, like, yeah it says, uh, and to our power for the will abundantly to um, Salakia, for the will abundantly pardon, for he will abundantly pardon. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, mm. neither are your ways my ways, say the most high. So the mm -hmm. Lord could be putting you through something to test you to see how you deal with it, but that's the main point. Yep. You're being tested. And if you're failing, bro, you're going to get put out of it because you're being looked upon by the Heavenly Father. So when the Heavenly Father examines your, your, your works, based on how you were operating, you're going to be judged accordingly. This is not us coming at you, hey, brother, you know, we just have a problem with you. No, man, this, this is us examining your, your, your daily activities or examining how you may create, um, deal with certain situations and then, you know, reproving you for it, which, you most, which you should be accepted, you know, because the most I, you know, who he loves, he, 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 he reproves. So you can't, you, you got to get out of your feelings. Most of these buggers, man, they be very emotional men. When you really look at them, they're emotional men. They're very feminine. They might act hard and they might, you know, they use the scriptures. And they talk and they yell and they shout. And they read, they keep, they retain a lot of information so they can try to fire back and argue. But there's no arguing with the Heavenly Father. That's what Apostle Ramla was saying. You can't out -slick the man that created slickness. And when you out there trying to do that, man, you look stupid. Yeah, you look like, foolish. Yeah, if I can say, man, hey, this this is a thing for men, man. All right, the oh, scripture said, "Gird up thy loins, man." And, and and what do men what do men do? They handle business, man. They handle mm -hmm. their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. All right, and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, He gave us this responsibility to do this. All right, so either you're gonna man up or you're gonna bitch up, man. That's that's what it is, man. I got a quick precept. Yeah, this is our Proverbs twenty nine and one. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck. Shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Hmm. You know, because you were given, you 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 know, when men reprove you, that's the Lord allowing men, because you know, the Lord always had an the most high always had an intercessor. Whether it was Moses, Joshua, Yahweh Shah, you know. Hmm. Okay. And and then he has his men, his prophets will go and reprove certain guys. What happened when they didn't take heed? The most high steps in. What happens when the most high steps in? It's not good, you know, and 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 and, and you don't you, you don't want the most high to step in and deal with this situation. Yeah. You want to take heed to what the men that he sent you is telling you, because right. if you don't take heed to what the men he's sending you telling are telling you, then when the most high steps in, it's gonna be total no no mercy, you know. Yeah, the Lord's a man of war, man. He don't have time to deal with your little issues, Bullshit. man. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like the mafia, man. You know, hey, I mean, every, everything is is cold, cold blooded, man. All right, you might, you, hey, you know, we might like certain men or whatever, man. But hey, when it comes to business, man, you gotta go. Yeah, right. yeah, kind of, because you gotta do what's beneficial for the body, and we're a body. You know, we can't just, you know, if you're not good for business, man, you know, then then what we're gonna do? We're just gonna change the page. There's different ways to deal with things. You know, you could sell your stocks, like hey, the, the um, they, they just did in America. You know, but, um, or you could cut something off altogether, say, now nah, this is not a good investment, or you could cut somebody off, you can put them to debt. It, there's all different judgments that come with, with when you do certain things. There's ordering things. And right. my brother just brought up, you know, um, there's different organizations. He used the mafia as an example, but there's an order to things. Even in the police force, even in, on a soccer team or a football team, there's order. Even in, in, a, college, in a college team. There's freshmen, there's juniors, there's sophomores, there's seniors. Yeah. There's levels to this. There's thing. levels to it. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you gotta, you kind of allow pride just to make you just think you're you're on a certain level, man. You you have to to, to deal with the men of the Lord. That's a good scripture that brother James Hawaii yes, Yahweh have put in First Samuel two twenty five. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. Shit. But if a man sin against the Lord, can. Like yeah. Who shall? Yeah, can. Yeah, but if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Right. Exactly. You know. You got it, bro. That's that's going right along with what you're saying. Yeah, because you can't you can't do that, man. How you go? Like the, the apostle said, if the Lord steps in, it's no it's no more talking. Ooh, now read that. 
Yeah, the second. Kind. This is um. Isaiah forty six and eight. No, no, right here, right. Here. right the next one. The next one. Notwithstanding, they hearken unto the voice they of hearken their not. They hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Yeah, and I believe, if I'm wow. not mistaken, that's going to uh, Eli and Hoff. Um, I'm sorry, Hophni and Phineas, mm -hmm. the two sons of Eli. If I'm not mistaken. You know, but I got something real quick. Sorry. Uh, uh, this is uh, Proverbs uh, 3 and 11. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For when the Lord loveth, I'm sorry, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth even as a father the son in whom he delighted. You know, so bottom line, when you see it, the Most High himself is not going to come down here. Yeah. Floating on, on a chariot. And tell him, look, my son, you better stop doing what you're doing because you're going in the wrong direction. I'm just here to correct you because I love you. It's not going to happen like that. Yeah. The Lord has men here to take care of that. When, when you go into the uh, parable of Lazarus and the rich man, the, when the rich man died and went to hell, you know, which means he, 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 was found, he, found, he knew what was going on in, in the future. He was going to be in slavery. He said, send some men down so that they could, you know, to go to my brethren, somebody from the dead to go to my brethren and tell them and warn them not to come to this place. What the Mo, what the Most High told them? Look, mm -hmm. they have Moses and, and and the prophets. Let them hear them. And what's that? That's this truth, this knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know. And who's and the word ain't gonna jump up itself and start talking. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have representatives of the Lord out here to teach the word. Yep. And okay. if you don't take heed to the men that the Lord set up, when the Most High steps in, it's done. You finished, man. Yeah. Through. You yeah. know. Which, which you should welcome, man, because you're supposed to know the scriptures. So then there's, like I said, you know, there's there's consequences for certain things that you did. You had a, you were holding a precept, brother? Yeah, uh, yes, one of the, uh, one of the precepts a brother uh, brought up, uh, Todd's one on the comment board, uh, is Isaiah 46 and 8. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Hey, so you just going, going back to the point, uh, you know, that that we gotta be men, man, and men have men. Being a man, it means that you have to you you may not have to you may not want to do things, but you gotta do it, man. All right, when you have a certain responsibility, all right, because you know there's that old saying that a man only thing a man has is his word. All right, and we what did we give Yahweh Shai? We gave him our word that we was gonna continue in this thing, man. Mm -hmm. All right, so hey, man, we we gotta keep we gotta keep going, and just just like uh you know. That's part of count, counting the cost. Yep. When you read the scriptures, it, see, it speaks about the man that, that didn't count the cost. Mm -hmm. You know, part of counting the cost. When we came to this thing, that's a contract, like, like the brother Gamal is going into. That's a contract. You know, we didn't sign it with our hands, but we signed it in our, with our deeds. You know, because when the Lord brought us into this thing, we actually got involved into it. You got to go finish up. Uh, let me see. Uh, Cause I, I got something too, you know. Well, that was it. You can All go right. on. You can go All on. right, because you know the bottom line is, you know, we're going into like business is business, you know. Now you have men out here that the Lord set up to teach, to reprove, you know, to get on people, to exhort. Why? Because the Lord is the time is approaching. Did the Most High come down during the time of Noah and tell the people that there was going to be a flood? No. Nope. Who did it? No. Nope. Noah did it. A man, you mm -hmm. know. Same thing with all the different prophets. When 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 Nebuchadnezzar came to, to take the uh, kingdom of Judah into slavery, who was there teaching and telling them that they were going into slavery? A man, Jeremiah. And all the different prophets told of different things in different times. Uh -huh. There were actually men there. The Most High wasn't there himself, even though his presence and spirit was there in the man, but they looked at it as a man. That's why it says, such a man only feared the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. Because they're not spiritual. These guys are not spiritual. They're not looking at spiritual things. They're not looking at the spiritual aspect of this thing. Because they are carnal. And the scriptures say that a carnal mind is enmity with the most high. But I got something real quick. Uh, Proverbs 9 and 7. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to, to himself shame. And he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Why? Because if you constantly cursing a wicked man out, they're going to want to fight you or they're going to want to kill you. Yeah. And that's what happened to the prophets in the past. It says, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. They hate him that reproved in the gate. Okay. Is not that, that's not what the scriptures say? 
Yep. It says, rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. Why? Because he's going to take into consideration that this is of the Lord. Something I'm doing wrong, I got to get it right. How do I get it right? This is a man of the Lord. He's getting on me. He's telling me I'm doing this wrong. So how can I fix that? Mm -hmm. That's a man that's thinking, you know, at least you have enough, uh, excuse me, presence of mind to say, okay, well, you know what? There's something wrong because there's a man of the Lord that's cursing me out. Now, what can I do to fix that? But a lot of these guys, they're just looking at men. Huh. They're looking at men. They say, you know, uh, you know, and they're thinking that they can now slick you by their talking. No, man. Just shut the fuck up and fall back and listen to what the Lord is saying to you, man. That's right. Yeah. Before your ass gets destroyed. Right. So now, let me finish this up. It says, uh, give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and and the knowledge of the of the holy is understanding. You know? You got it, brother. Okay. This is... um. Matthew 7 and 6 says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, either cast your pearls mm -hmm. before swine. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, the apostle just said, you know, if you keep arguing with this, with this demon man, you know, really it is casting your pearls before swine. And what, yeah. what, what is he going to do? It says, Lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Thank you. It's going to want to fight. It's going to want to jump up and down because yep. they're not dealing in the spirit. So now they're going to get carnal. So that's why, you know, in Proverbs, it doesn't make sense. Don't, just don't do it. Fuck those guys, man. Yeah. You know, let them keep waxing worse and bugging out, going to different levels of bug ups, man. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you know, hey, all, all we did was give them give them the warning, man. And then just put fall back. You know, we, we're waiting on the Lord, you know. And, to you know, we got to continuously do the work, keep doing what right. we got to do. Hey, bro, you, the scripture says, seek out your own salvation <laughs> in fear yeah. with fear and trembling, man. So if this is what you want to do, bro, go do it. Mm -hmm. Just, I ain't got nothing to tell you. You know what I'm saying? Because once you, and the scripture we um, read earlier, if you sin against the Lord, man, ain't, ain't, not, ain't nothing I can do for you. Done. You know what I'm saying? And we're in, we're in a time of judgment, man. The most high is about to start killing a lot of people in a mass, mass, mass amounts, man. Mass, mass amounts. So when this start happening, then a lot of you are going to wake up. But mm -hmm. it's going to be too late because both, most of your scoffers are going to be the ones that are going to be killed first because the scripture said, the most is going to start at his own door, at his own people. That's Judgment right. is going to start yeah. right here. So most of you scoffers, y'all going to be the first ones getting knocked the fuck off. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I got a precept. That was it on that? Yeah. This right. is uh, Ezekiel 34 and 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. And I am your and I am your power, saith the Lord, saith the most high. Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, hey. That's what the Lord is dealing with, is men, man. Yep. All right? The, hey, the, the Lord is not going to come into your crib, all right, and, and and sit you down and say, you know you've been fucking up, right? <laughs> you know you're not fucked up. You know you're not fucked up, right? Yeah. Hey, the, the Lord isn't going to come get his belt and whip you, man. All right? That's not Even the, though he come, will use his belt because his belt is Esau. Yeah, his belt is Esau. Yeah, he will. Yeah. Hey, well, you know, spiritually he will, but, you know, um, you know, you know, not... Physically, Physically yeah. you know what I'm saying? So so at the end of the day, you know, he's going to put it in men's spirit to get on you, man. All right. That's that's the way it works. OK, the Lord's spirit is in men. OK, that he gave us all of when 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 uh, when he left the disciples, what did he leave? He left his spirit amongst mm -hmm. those men. OK, yep. he said, you shall have the Holy Spirit. OK, so that's just what it is. You have to deal with the order and you have to listen to the men. That Yahweh Shai set up, all right? That he gave his spirit unto and, and to minister unto you, okay? Mm -hmm. That's right. I got something real quick. Huh. This is Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Now, how is that happening? By the men of the Lord, the men that the Lord set up to teach. They're crying. The wisdom is crying out. You're not going to have wisdom on the street corner just sitting there and just start crying. It's men of the Lord that the Lord put the spirit on to go out there and teach, right? It says, she standeth in the top of high places, mm. by the way, in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. 
Why? Because you have men out there that are Israelite men that the Lord is crying out to because that's like you read in Ezekiel 34. The flock of my pasture are men. So the Lord is using men to gather other men. So when, because Yahweh Shai, when he came, he came in the flesh, right? Did not it say he made him a little lower than the angels? So was Yahweh Shai an angel when he came on the earth? I mean, technically, yes, mm -hmm. but not in the sense of what we think of an angel uh, in, in, in the spiritual sense of it. Uh, yep. He came on the earth as a man, mm -hmm. but he came as a messenger because that's all the word angel means. So it said he made him a little lower than the angels. So he came as a man on the earth to bring forth the business of the Father of the Most High. And there were certain men that listened, certain women that listened, understood, accepted it, believed and was, was sealed at that time to be saved. And there was a lot of men and women that didn't believe him. Okay. You know? So that was, a, that was the most high reaching out. So what happened? Since they didn't listen, after a while, when Yahweh went back to the spirit world, when they gave him up to be crucified, then 70 AD happened. And a lot of those people that was back there that gave Yahweh up, they suffered 70 AD horribly. You know? Because they didn't accept the Most High's hand that he was given out to them through his son, Yahweh Shai. It says, O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and, the, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. You're not going to be questioning the Most High if you know that the Most High's words are pure. Mm -hmm. You know? Y'all brothers got something? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. yeah, this is um, Psalms 141 and, um, and 5. <clears throat> it says, Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. Mm, beautiful. And let him reprove. Now, what does that mean? It's just like saying, like, let, let a righteous man slap me. Wow. It'll be a kindness. But it don't, because a righteous man usually ain't going to just come up to you and just bust your ass. Kindness. You know, it's talking about uh, uh, dealing with this knowledge, correcting you, reproving you. Cut you. And sometimes, like, like even in that movie Excalibur, it says, Merlin, the words that you speak unto me, they cut like. A knife or something like that. Okay. They're hard. No, I'm sorry. They're harder than steel. Mm. You know. So words are powerful, man. That's what the scripture say that the words of the Lord are, are quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Cutting. That's the cutting part. They're kicking your ass. But it's just for you to get yourself in order. Okay. You know. Read that again. Okay. This is um, Psalms 141 and five. It says, <laughs> "Let the righteous smite me; it shall be a kindness." Mm. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. Right, because the man of the Lord is not going to curse you out about some wicked shit. Yeah. Boss man, was my, was my, you know? Yeah, nah, yeah. yeah he ain't going to curse you out on some wicked shit. Okay. And, and when you when when you can't accept that reproof, man, there's more proof of you really lacking faith and more proof of you being a giant fucking turkey. Yeah. Because all these guys say give double honors to the elders and apostles, but when they come down with certain judgments or they give certain orders, you're not doing it. Yeah, where's the honor? Well, where's the honor? Yeah. So you're you're questioning, you know, questioning what what would you look if if you let so if you leave something in the spirit and you cast a lot in the spirit, that's you leaving it up to your how about Shem Shai. That's right. When the when the disciples asked for the next disciple to come in, because there was eleven disciples left. When they actually had the next disciple come in, they said, Oh Lord, prayer. It was prayer. Oh Lord, thou that knowest the hearts of men, declare among these two who shall be the, the you know, the, 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 the basically the, the, the uh, uh, apostle or disciple that's going to take over. And what happened? The lot fell on a certain man. Mm -hmm. You know, because they left it up to the most high, because they wasn't even sure. Okay. <clears throat> Out of all these men that follow us, who shall be? Because you, most high, you, Yahweh Basham Yahshai, you know the hearts of men. So who should we put in that position? A lot of these guys don't believe that. They don't believe that the Heavenly Father has men down here. They don't, look, they don't believe in the Most High, they don't believe in Yahweh Shai. Bottom line. Okay. And the bottom line, Yahweh Shai said that's the ultimate sin if you don't believe in Him. Matter of fact, somebody, Babapa Shai, is there more to that, brother? Yeah. You can finish that. Okay. Get, uh, Babapa Shai, can you get, um,
St. John 16, we're going to start at the first verse. We're going okay. to go, go through some of that uh, chapter. Go ahead. Okay. It says, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. Right, because the scriptures say, you have not resisted unto, unto blood, striving against sin. So what you're being told is not going to break you. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be beaten, you know, like, and, and you just be left. You know how when somebody beats somebody so bad, they just left within an inch of their life, yeah, sit in a corner like yeah. that, and they just hoping just to be able to get enough energy to get up so they can go to the hospital? It ain't like that. You're going to get spiritually whipped, but it's just to get you in the, in the proper order, to make you go in the right direction, man. Right. Mm -hmm. Man, niggas, man, this, this is just the fucking worst thing, man. You know? And you thinking that, you know, we come into the truth, the Lord finally gave us the knowledge and the truth and opened up our minds, everything's going to be fine? Shh. Yeah, okay. It's going to be fine eventually when the Lord comes back, but man, this you got some of the worst, grimiest motherfuckers coming into this thing, man. You just be like, man, Lord, why you yeah. bring these grimy motherfuckers into this thing? But mm -hmm. it's got to be that way, man. The most high is just, whoo, man. Yeah. So like, this brother of GMS Vegas, sit down. Uh, Sirach 20 and 2. It is much better to be proved than to be angry secretly and he that confesses his fault shall be preserved from hurt. Uh, Brother uh, Itazo, um, Proverbs 16, 33. The Lord is cast into the lap. I'm sorry, the, the lap. lap is cast into the lap. But the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Right, because the Lord, the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is the one that's governing and making sure that things are running in the proper order that he wants it. Fine. Not you. Fine. Not about your feelings. Fine. Y'all got it. Yeah, and that's why you go to the men of, you know, that's why you go to your elders. And you go, you go to, this is a, via Salak and GMS Vegas sit down, Sarak 20 and 3. It says, how good is it when thou art reproved to show repentance for so shalt thou escape willful sin. Ooh. Wow, man. You gotta, that's what I'm saying, but really when like, you know, the apostles and they come around or your elders come around, man, you should be, you should welcome reproof, man. Because that's love. You know, and that's going to make you escape from willfully sinning because you're going to know, no, that's wrong. Because like with a kid, yeah. you know, they're going to do, they're going to start touching stuff, yeah, start putting worries. stuff in their mouth all the time. Yeah. Eventually you might be working, you don't have time to keep telling them, you go, it's going to go from stop to fall up to pow, yeah. you know, to, so that you can get them to, to stop doing it. Yeah. Not because they're just irritating you, but because it could be harmful for them. It's a child. He can pick up something and hurt yeah, themselves. Child. Because now, yeah. if you don't do that, now you put it in the hands of the Lord. The Lord, hey, your, your child. Many kids, they they die all the time in cribs because their parents fuck up, man. Leave shit there, you yeah. know. And it's the parents' fault. So the apostles and the elders, being our spiritual parents, they tell us certain things so that we won't go off. Damn, bro. But you can't get into it where it's like, well, this is a man <laughs> just speaking to me. That's the Lord talking to me. Because now you get, now you make it personal, and now you and your feelings like, well, he's telling me. Now you're not being spiritual, man. And now, when that man gets annoyed and has nothing else to tell you, and say, all right, man, I got something else to do. Go figure it out yourself. Now you're dealing with you and the, and the most high power, which is a terrible power. And now, in the time that we're in, especially, man, the Lord is angry right now. And the Lord is putting his anger, his righteous anger, his indignation in his men. So we don't have time to have any feelings towards y'all anymore, man. It's amping up. It's ramping up now. So now we welcome the Lord bringing judgment on y'all. Now we, we set up prayers and curses that the Lord do bring his judgment on y'all so y'all can see and actually believe in the most high. Because most of y'all men don't really believe in the Lord, like Apostle Rama was saying. He don't, you, don't, you don't really have belief or fear as you won't be doing the things that you're doing. And you'll be taking the reproof. Yeah, because if I could say, you know, the brother was saying, you know, we don't have time. We don't have time for a lot of outside shit, man. All right. So, hey, the the the, the topic of the uh, lesson is business is business. We we only have time for this, man. We don't have time for other shit, man. You know, when, when if you if you look at these business people in the world, they're not looking at uh you know you look at these successful entrepreneurs. All right. If, if you look at all the uh if you look at all these um, the if you look on YouTube, character traits of an entrepreneur, all right, they they're not looking at TV, 
They're not looking at all these motherfuckers that all these millionaires and billionaires and, and people that are really about their business, right? They're not they're not into the bullshit, man. Can, can. You're watching them actually. They're putting what mm -hmm. they they're putting their works on display and you're watching them. Like all these people that y'all pay attention to, y'all listen to their music, y'all watch the movies they put out, they're working and they getting paid. Now how do we get paid? We're we're hopefully we're we're praying that we're of the elect, the hopefully elect, that our pay. It's to get out of here. It's salvation. So we're y'all watching us. Y'all learn from the elders and apostles, say double honors, and then y'all go off and do your own thing and still continue in in in, in the old ways. Yep. And now there's no like, hey, I'll get um the post uh Mataza Wong, um James Quick and Paul for just posted the scripture. It's um Hebrews 10 26. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remain no more sacrifice for sins. So if after you know, brothers come to you and they tell you, hey, bro, you going off here, you going off here, bro. I can, and you disregard it because those are just men. And you're not looking at it spiritually. You know, that's one warning. Then a brother might come back again. That's two warnings. Now an elder get involved. That's three warnings. Now, you know, one of the top men come and they, they get involved. Now, you know, and, and throughout all that process of maintaining order and showing you the script, breaking down the scriptures to show you where you're going off. Because at the same time, we have a fear of the Lord. That if we don't deal with this matter in the right way, we could get judged again, you know what I'm saying? Right. So we 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 pray to the Lord, you know, that yo man, am, am I going off, man? Am I being too harsh on this brother? I'm, you know, let's let's deal it the right way, let's try to work this out. You know, but when you realize all you know, all, all arrows point to now, this man is off, you gotta reprove that man. You gotta know, hey, once if he doesn't see it, man, and he lets the Lord step in, you know, that's the scripture that said there's no more. Sacrifice for sin. Sacrifice for sin. <clears throat> yeah, but um, I got some real quick because, like you were saying, brother, you know, it's like, you know, business is business. In this society, in this world, you have Esau that sets up a business. If you have people that are not beneficial to your business, what are you gonna do? You're gonna get rid of them. Yeah. Right? Because you want people fired for them, right? Fired for them. <laughs> so you want yeah. you want people in your business that are gonna officiate. Make money for you and make your business go forward, mm -hmm. not backwards. Right. If you're just a shucking and jiving type of dude, if you're a jive turkey or a knuckle dragger, if you are a shiftless dude, you ain't gonna get in that business if they're trying to really make money. Cut. You know? So this is this is this is this is Luke, right? Luke 16. I'm gonna start at one. It says, and he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man, right? So this rich man could represent somebody in one of these Fortune 500 families or, God. you know, like somebody that's actually got a business that's thriving, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that this is exactly what it's meaning, but this is a parable. Right. You know, because you got some guys out there yeah, simple simple. as fucking yeah, hell, yeah. man. You know, which had a steward. Now, a steward is what? A servant. Somebody that works for you, right? Mm -hmm. He says, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. So he wasn't doing the right thing. He wasn't officiating the business. Now this is Yahweh Shai giving a parable, you know, about these guys out here that are not really doing the business of the father. You know, that's the same thing. Now, Esau, in all his wickedness that he's doing, he still makes sure that those people obey him because, you know, he knows how to manipulate and get what he got to get done. You know? It says... And he called him and said unto them, How is it that I hear this of thee? So this is the master, right? He's asking, look, I'm, what, the, what the fuck is this I'm hearing about you? You fucking my business up? Mm. In so many words. It doesn't say that. I, you know, you got to say this because you got these simple-minded people out here. Well, it didn't say that. Yeah. Read between the fucking lines. God. Fucking idiots. He said, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest no longer be steward. So he kicking his ass out. Yeah. Because you yeah. fucking my business up, man. Yeah. You fucking up my money. Yeah. Hey, this is a business. Yahweh Shai gave us money. What did Yahweh Shai say? Till I come, occupy, you know, occupy till I come. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So he said, when if, if you put my money out there, I can get my, my money back with usury. The parable of the talents. The parable of the talents, which yeah. is exactly the same parable. Yeah. It says... Yes. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. So this is 
uh, same thing as a, a guy that's in the knowledge that ain't doing the right thing, mm -hmm. that the most high is about to strip his ass yeah. of, of the truth. You know? Wish he can do that. It, it, exactly. <laughs> so here it is. You got a guy out there in the world, Esau in the world, they're about to get stripped of, of their of their of their uh, livelihood, right? And this is what he said. He's considering this in his in his mind, right? He says, "I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed." So he's trying to find out in his mind, "What can I do to make it up to my master?" God, mm -hmm. these guys are not thinking like that. No, they're looking at, "Oh, this guy, he getting on me. I don't like this guy. Well, why he getting always getting on me?" Yeah, because they're looking at the man and not, they're not looking at the master. God. And when you do that, you're really directly questioning the Most High. Yeah. You know, because now you you know man's going off the Lord, man. So when when the man sends certain men to you, you gotta you gotta see why you're sending it. You know, it's it's but you guys are finished, man. Exactly, finish <laughs> to the tenth power. It says I am resolved what to do. So in other words, he was just at a point where he didn't know what the fuck to do. Yeah. Right. Excuse my uh, uh, my medieval French. It says that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he's trying to figure out a way that he can still have favor in his master's eyes. Right. These guys don't do trying that. They make good. Because they're like, ah, this guy, this fucking guy, uh, Ramalab is getting on me. <laughs> you know? Yet. Start calling you out your name. Okay. You know? It says... So he called every one of his lord's debtors unto him and said unto the, uh, to the first, How much owest thou unto my lord? So now this guy, he's, a, he's a, in danger of being put out of his stewardship of, uh, out of what he's good at or, or, or what he, his business. So he said, you know what? What, what can I do? I'm going to call my lord's debtors. Right? So he's calling the debtors. Cause this is his this is the Lord's his Lord's business, and he's trying to make sure that he's trying to get whatever he can so mm. that he can find favor in his Lord's eyes again. Okay. And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. So you owe a hundred? Give me fifty of that. Mm -hmm. Right? Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, an hundred measures of a wheat. And he said unto him, take thy bill and write four score. Eighty. Mm. You owe a hundred, write fifty. You owe a hundred, write eighty. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's getting some kind of benefit out of the work that is owed to his Lord. Right? Mm -hmm. He says, and the Lord commend, commended the unjust steward. He was fucking up. But because he did these things, his Lord was was commending him, mm -hmm. picking yeah. him up, giving Kind-hmm. him praise, Kind-hmm. right? Because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generations wiser than the children of light. Who are the children of this world? Esau. Who are the children of light? Jake. Yeah. But Esau will do what he got to do to to uh, 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 make things right. Make things make right things with his right, master. Yeah. But these fucking clowns won't do that. Okay. For the sake of the business. Right. For the, sake, yeah. of the, for the right. sake of the body. To make things better. Business is business. Business yeah. is business. So you got to make the right the right calls, man. And some things that may not be, you may not like it, but you got to do it. It's necessary. Yeah. You know, some things are, are, are said for a specific reason. When, when the apostles and elders put orders out, they know why they're putting those orders out, so it, it's be wise to you to listen and to follow those instructions. Yeah, yeah. Esau's a dealer of demon. Yeah, hey, but but uh, yeah, man, you want to be invested in the company, man, because you work for that company, man. so you wanna you wanna uh, be in the company's benefit, man. Mm -hmm. All right, just like uh, if you if you ever been in a lot of these job interviews, all right, they ask you that question: Why do you want to work? Why do you want to work for this company? And you gotta ask yourself. Why do I want, you know, why why am I working for the Lord? That's a question that you got to ask yourself, mm -hmm. okay? Am I just doing this, you know, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you're doing it for, man. All right, but everything, it has to be, it can't just all be in your benefit because it's not about you, man. Yeah. All right, you're just, you're just a man, man. All right, it, this is all about the company. It all, it all has to, it all has to benefit the company. 
right. if you have a selfish motherfucker that's just all about himself, okay, then then you you know you out. Okay. Yeah, because it's a body. Okay. Yeah. And the body works together in unison. Yahweh Shai is the head and everybody in in every member in the body has a different office and everybody has to work together. When the when the body is 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 sick, all the members try to work together to try to help and get rid of that sickness. Mm -hmm. You know? So if there's somebody that's in there that's sick in the body, it's gotta go because it's gonna throw the unity of the body off. Yeah, kind of because <laughs> when, when you're a part of this, this also when you when you go through that first fire and you get <clears> fine <throat> and now you're into the company, now they're looking at you. They're looking at your production, they're looking at what you're doing, the time that you're coming, yep. they're looking at your productivity, and now they're gonna analyze it and at the end of the year they're gonna give you okay, this this is how you did, you know, and it's, it could determine what level of raise you get if you get yep. a promotion how things are going you know how, how is your people skills how are you working with your other teammates in, in the company everything is going to be assessed and then based on based on that assessment you're going to be judged accordingly okay you can't stand there and get mad and be like well, bro well you had a year of however long all we did was show you what you did and now we're letting you know because now as a company member you have to carry yourself on a certain esteem you have to represent this company, and this and this com particular company is, you know, this, this um, the order of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You gotta act like a man of law. You can't be out here doing certain things. You can't act any old way. This in your walk, bro. This in your this in your company. You're a part of something. That's right. You know. Yeah, there was something that came into mind, but it kind of. I, I had a precept. Yeah, bring it up, bring it up, bro. Kind. This is um, Romans fourteen and um. I'll start at seven. It says for six. I said six. That's okay. He said, He that regarded the day regarded it unto the most high, or unto the Lord. And he that regarded not the day to the Lord, he doeth not regarded it. He that eateth, it, eateth it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. For for she giveth the most high thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth the most high thanks. Mm -hmm. For none of us live it to himself, and no man died to himself. And that's about it. You working for the Lord, man. You ain't working for yourself, man. Mm -hmm. You know. So the Lord got got an order. Uh, right. so is that First Corinthians fourteen? No, this is um uh, Romans fourteen. Let me get First Corinthians fourteen and forty. Okay. Let me read this real quick and then okay. jump right back into that. Okay. First Corinthians fourteen and forty. Yeah. Let all things be done decently and in order. Right. Let all things be done decently and in order. The Lord set up an order, man. You ain't going to come in this thing and change the order. That's right. You know, just fucking fall back, man. Or go do something else, man. You know, go do something else. Go join IUIC or IUCPK, HODC. They're looking for members. You know? You're going to come into this. If you're coming into this thing, if you're going to be a part of Great Millstone, you're going to be a part of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, you're going to do the things that the Lord tells you to do. Otherwise, fuck off, man. Go ahead, bro. Learn. Excuse um, my medieval French, but you know you get pissed off sometimes, man. Kind. Um, this is um, verse eight. It says, "For whether we live, we live unto the Lord." Right. Whether we live, we live unto the Lord. A lot of guys they look at this thing because you know what they're about as spiritual as a wooden nickel. I, I wish I could remember some of the mother stuff that brothers were saying. <laughs> but they they're about as spiritual as a wooden nickel, man. You know. They're about as spiritual as... At least there's a doorknob in, <laughs> and, and, and a trap house in the bluff. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They're not spiritual at all because they look at, right they're looking at the man. Kind they're not of. looking at the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Although they claim that they learn and oh, oh Barakatai yeah. Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, but... Double honors to the apostle that was a yeah, GMS. But when it comes down to, to it, you see their true intentions because they're not getting down with what the Lord is saying. Kind. Mm. Read that kind. again. Kind of says, for whether we live, we live unto the Lord. So if we're living, we're living unto the Lord. Because Yahweh Bashem El Shai is who brought us into this thing. What does uh, John 6, 44 say? A man can uh, uh, cannot come to me unless the Father draw him. You know, and I will raise him up in the last days. We're not the ones that came into this thing. We didn't choose to come into this thing. The Lord Yahweh Bashem El Shai brought us into this thing. So if you claim to be a man of the Lord, you're going to follow the things that the Lord said. Yep. There's an order. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Go ahead, bro. 
Kern. It says, for um, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Right, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Because at the end of the day, our whole existence is about what Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai wants. Go ahead. That's what the scripture said. We are prisoners mm -hmm. of the Lord. Right. Go ahead. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. We are the Lord's. We're the Lord's possession. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Shai mm -hmm. bought us, man. We are debtors to him. But hey, goes to God. Good. God, it says, for this end, Yahweh Shai both died and rose. There you go. And revived that he might be the Lord both of the dead and the living or and living. Yeah, because the most high set up Yahweh Shai to guide us. Mm -hmm. This is this is Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai's program, man. Right. You know? Okay. You got it, bro. Yeah, yeah. He bought us with his blood, man. No, we're his possession. So we're we you can't come in here and try to just do whatever you want to do, man. This we're 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 not man's possession. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the Lord's gonna come back to redeem his men. So you, you better be careful how you treat men. And you better listen to, to, to men of, of, of high esteem, man. And men with a good report with the most high. I got some. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. First Corinthians 6 and 20. For ye are bought with a price. Beautiful. Therefore glorify the most high in your body and in your spirit, which are the most high. Right. Because mm -hmm. you read that again, brother. Brother Kahn. Shah. That's the best. First Corinthians 6 and 20. For ye are bought with a price. Right. You are bought with a price. We're all bought with a price. Go ahead. Kind. Glorify, therefore glorify the most high in your body. Right. And in glorify your the most high in your body and in what? And in your spirit. And in your spirit. So how do you do that? By doing the things that the Lord said. Didn't, didn't Yahweh Shai said, if you love me, keep my commandments? Mm. So there's, there's, there's commandments that the Lord left. Mm -hmm. Didn't he say, um, um, I, I pray not for these alone, but for them also that shall believe on me through their words? Kind. Through the men that he set up words? Come on, man. This is, uh, I got something real quick. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was it on that? Yeah, that was it. Second Corinthians 5, and uh, I'm going to start at 18. It says, And all things are of the Most High, who has reconciled us to Yah to himself by Yahweh Shai. That's why we say, Abba, Father, because the Lord adopted us back. The Most High adopted us. Yahweh adopted us back to him through Yahweh Shai. Excuse me. And have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that the Most High was in Yahweh Shai, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, excuse me, and hath con committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Yahweh Shai, as though the Most High did beseech you by us. We pray you in Yahweh Shai's stead, be ye reconciled to the Most High, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we may be made the righteousness of the Most High unto him. But the point is, now then we are ambassadors for Yahweh Shai, as though the Most High did beseech you by us. We pray you in Yahweh Shai's stead, be ye reconciled to the Most High. So the Lord set up men to do this work, to, 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 to teach, to, 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 uh, Grab and to and to and to uh, uh, reprove and re and reprove you know reprove uh, uh, re um, uh, um, exhort you know to instruct with all long suffering man mm -hmm. you know so if you don't want it leave man okay. nobody told you to come into this thing in the first place you can leave if you want to change the doctrine you got a problem with your how about your mouth shy take it up with them you know okay. you brothers got anything else. Uh, nah, that's it. Any closing statements y'all want to make? Hey, well, I mean, yeah. going back to the original topic, business is business, you know. Yeah. So, hey, we just got to tend to the business of, of uh, you know, what we signed up for and, and just keep on pushing, you know, because, you know, all things come in the past. And I know you brothers can feel feel that, the, the, I mean, the end is here, man. Uh -huh. All right. So, hey, this, this is the end of, you know, this is the end, man. Okay. Our work is almost done, all right. But we gotta keep pushing and, and try to try to you know maintain maintain that drive, maintain that diligence, all right. Um, that word business bring to bring it out again. It means uh, in in diligence right. or in the, in attendance. 
Get right. diligence and make your calling and election sure. Kern. Kern. Hey, we go, and we gonna end it just like that. Kern. All right. That's right. Hey, so with that, we want to give our praise to you. How about you? Know, you, know, you, know, you know, and I uh, hope your brother been edified with this lesson. Mm -hmm. Next time we say shalom. 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 Finished.